the last video, we were looking at the absolute or specific humidity of air, and we know that that's omega, and that's a ratio of the mass of the vapor over the mass of everything in the air that's not vapor, O2, N2, everything else. And we did some math using ideal gas relations, and we also came up with the fact that omega is equal to 6 point two two times the partial pressure of the vapor over the total pressure minus the total pressure in the vapor. And what I want to do in this video is take this one step further and, and look at, well, we know that from experience that if you continue to add moisture to the air that you can only go so far. The air can only hold so much moisture. And we can actually predict how much moisture that is in terms of our newly found absolute humidity ratio. If we have so much water in the air that it can't hold no more, we say that the air is saturated. And when things are saturated, we actually know from our tables, we can look up, if we are given a pressure, we can deduce what the temperature is in the same way. If we have a temperature, we know, we say it's saturated, we know what the partial pressure is at for, that, for that moment. So a natural question then is, let's say, what is the maximum specific humidity at, say, 40 degrees Fahrenheit? How would we resolve that? Well, we need to go look up what is the pressure of vapor when we're saturated. And we know total pressure of the air with everything is around 14.7 psi A, absolute, absolute pressure, not gauge pressure. So let me go ahead and let's bring over my saturated water tables from my thermodynamics textbook. And what you can see here is that at 40 degrees F, we have a saturation pressure in PSI A of 0 0.12. And so that is the partial pressure of air, or partial pressure of vapor that can support all this vapor when we're at 40 degrees. So we can now take this value and we can go back to our formula we derived for specific humidity and we can get out the humidity ratio. So let's do that. this off to the side and so if we come back here we knew that at 40 degrees F we found that 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 pressure that saturation pressure or vapor is around 0.12 so we say Omega is 0 0.622 times Use a different color. 0 0.12 psia divided by 14.7. And this is pretty straightforward to solve. And if you were to do this on your calculator, you would get something that's around this. And again, this is when the air is saturated. This is the most moisture that the air could hold. And look, it's in terms of the ratio between the vapor and the air and, and their masses, this isn't a lot. This is five thousandths. The vapor is five thousandths the mass of the air when it's got as much as it can hold. And so that's an interesting result. Now just for the sake of the example, we can go ahead and let's look at, say, when we're at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. What does that look like? Well, let's bring over the table again. And at 70, we are at 0.36 PSIA for saturation pressure. So let me scroll down here. So our new omega 
we're saturated at 70 degrees. So that was 0.36 psi a divided by 15.7. If you do this, you get something on the order of 0, 0 0.016. So three times as much. The air can hold three times as much moisture at 70 degrees F saturated than it can at 40 degrees. And so what you can actually do, and this is something you'll see on the psychometric chart when we get to that, is if you had temperature on this x-axis and you had omega as a y-axis you would notice that there's some curve to this so if we were at 40 if this isn't zero we would have been at 0 0.005 and at 70 degrees F we were at 0 0.016 and you could do this for all temperatures and People have done this, and this is actually one of the basic shapes that you'll see when it comes to the psychometric chart, where we actually move humidity to this side, and we have this as our saturation line, and we put a whole bunch of other stuff on it. But we'll save that for a future video. See you soon.